today I'm going to focus on Sundays. Sundays, great Sundays. In C3, one of the things we really, really believe is that we should have fantastic Sundays, that they should be out of all the days in the week, that Sunday should be a peak for us in our timetable, in our schedule. So let's think about great Sundays. Now, when Donna and I were first saved, way, 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 way back in the 1990s, <laughs> at the end of the 1980s, actually, <laughs> no, it was 1990, we started going to church. And uh, we got married shortly after and it was all cool. You know, um, Donna's family started scheduling family dinners on Sunday nights. Uh, uh, lunchtime, yeah, yeah, okay. Okay. They, sh- they started scheduling these family dinners that clashed with church time, right? And so we as, as new Christians and as a new family had to make a decision are we going to go to church family or are we going to go to family family? And, uh, I mean, it wasn't very hard. We came to church, right? And, um, you know, it wasn't that we loved our family less. It wasn't that we didn't like being with them. It certainly wasn't that all of a sudden we had gone off food, right? It wasn't any of those things. It was just that we had found a place to go to a people to be with, the people of same mind and heart. And it was just unthinkable to us that we would leave this great place of Sunday and of exploration and of discovery and of joy and deliverance and stay at home with our family. We'd found our peeps. We'd found our place. We'd found our belonging. We, were, we knew where we needed to be and that was in church. And so it caused some ructions in the family and, and that kind of stuff. And they eventually would move them and shift them to another time. But Sundays have been great for me since I became a Christian because I decided I would be in church. Let's look at the, the book of Psalms 118 and verse 24. Ah, Mr. Fenby, you've got the scripture. Look at that. Isn't he doing great, Paul, up the back there? He's just a, such a technician. Make sure that we're fine. Psalm 118. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. The book of Acts contains the story of the church beginning. Jesus had come. Jesus had died. Jesus had come back. And then Jesus had gone again to be seated at the right hand with the Father. And what he left was the beginnings of a church. So Acts chapter 2, we see something, the beginning of the church. Let's look at a characteristic of the church. It says here in verse 46, So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favour with all the people, And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. So think about this. Here's um, God adding to the church every day. And we're talking about the significance of Sundays in the Christian faith. We're talking about it being a routine. We're talking about it being central to the believer. And there's an aspect of it that was filled with joy. It was simple. They were praising God. And God began to breathe upon that group of people simply as they went about the idea of meeting together, of eating together, of worshipping God together. It was a simple, simple concept. And we, uh, 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 we're believing that, we're believing that uh, um, Sundays can be fantastic. And I know that they are a place where God can touch our hearts and fill us for the week ahead. He can repair us from the week that we've just had and He can fill us for the week ahead. The, the, the first church loved meeting together. And it's very, very interesting. You know, we, we know that, who, who wrote the book of Acts? Someone tell me, one of you Bible scholars. Luke? How about, how about Luke? It was Luke, right? <laughs> Good, good guess. Paul was around a bit later. 
Okay, but uh, Luke, uh, Luke wrote Luke and he actually says here in the first verse of Acts, he said, uh, I, I, I thought I would write a continuation to you um, of all that Jesus first began to do and teach. Um, and, and we see that the risen Jesus introduced in Luke then hands the baton on to the Holy Spirit in the book of Acts. The same ministry of Jesus in Luke continues in the, in the book of Acts. It's a record of Christianity under the power of the Holy Spirit. I went to a church when I was in America that years ago was really, really well known for revival. In fact, this church had been a, a thriving centre of revival. People were getting saved and there was joy and there was good things going on. And I went to this church and I'd heard that things had changed in this church. I went, I went along. It was a Wednesday night service. And Donna and I went along there and, you know, this is the head church of many thousands of churches. You know, it was probably one of the saddest Christian services I'd ever been to. I went to the beginning prayer meeting. It was dead. I was waiting for the joy in the worship. It was dead. I was waiting for something to happen in the preaching and the words just fell flat. I, I thought to myself, wow, what has happened to this place? What has happened to this place that began in such vibrancy and such power and had such authority that it's become known as a de dead place and can be experienced like that? Something was missing. When I got saved, we had a, um, we had a bunch of friends who were be become musicians. I'd had a guitar since I was 12, but I didn't get saved till I was 23. And... Uh, in between that time, my guitars sort of sat in the back of the cupboard just gathering dust. I'd play the same old chords and songs. But when I got saved, Donna did a really good, good thing. Actually, at, at that time, I don't think I had a guitar. I asked her to marry me and I gave her a beautiful engagement ring because that's what you do, isn't it? You know what she gave me? She gave me a guitar <laughs> because that is a woman of God, I'm telling you. She gave me a beautiful washburn Guitar, big D20. It was awesome. Anyway, I now had a reason to play. and I, My skills picked up. Some other guys from other churches, we got together and we, we started a band. There was a bass player called Mal and a drummer called Andrew and a guitarist called Rick and a keyboard player called Tina. And, uh, we, and we were from like four different churches. And we'd practice in my backyard or over at Andrew's place. And it was cool. And uh, after a while, we had like 10 songs. It was cool. And then we'd get invited to go play in concerts at different churches. And we even played on Coogee Beach. That was probably my favourite concert of all time, you know. Set up a great big rig there at Coogee Beach. And, you know, just hundreds of people just skating past. And it was just a, it was a surreal to think we were worshipping Jesus outside, just like last week's um, Eastern United. It was a great time. Anyway, our band's name was called About Face because, and it was the idea of that was we, we were going one way, but Jesus turned our lives around and now we were heading the other way. How many other, that's a great name for a band. Now, after a while, Malcolm, he, uh, he got planted out to go and start a church so he couldn't be in the band anymore. And uh, so... Um, a couple of the other people didn't like the name About Face. I thought it was all right. But someone said, oh, we've got to change the band's name. So we changed it. What we change it to? I remember one of the names that was put up was Acts 29. Now, if you know the Bible, it's, called, it only has, it's only 28 chapters in Acts. And the idea was that the book of Acts is still going on through a band like ours. <laughs> that was, I, I think, actually, I know who put the idea up. It was me. I, I had the idea for that. I don't know how long that band name, name lasted, not very long. But here was my heart. I knew that the work of the Holy Spirit in building the church was not yet finished. And today it's still not finished. The work of the Holy Spirit, he's still doing Jesus' work on earth right, right among us. I was in the US in early 2017 and early 2018 and we were there for 12 weeks 
And so for, for we went to 10 different churches over that period of time. We're just traveling around all over the place, all flavors of churches, from California to Nevada. We were in Colorado, um, Texas, Arizona. We were up in Washington State. We were in Canada, we were back down in California, and we, we traveled all over America. We did a whole lot of miles. I think we did 10,000 miles in 10 weeks or something. But as a, as a Christian family, you know what we were doing? We were looking for a place to belong. We just left and our old organisation, and we were looking for a place to plug into. We, we wanted, even if it was just for that week, have a place where we could worship and experience the life of God, the vibrancy of God. We wanted to lean in. We got dressed for church. We, we, we went along. We made sure we were somewhere. And uh, we wanted to find some fellowship with the, with the people of God, just a place where we could could connect and be fed for our souls. Some people take holidays from church, but personally, you know, I find it better to be in a church setting. I just like church. I just like being in church. I'd rather be in church than out of one come any, any, any Sunday. And I think there's something about setting the time aside and setting your heart aside in preparation for God and His Word, it really is an act of service that my spirit enjoys. Now, you know what? If, if you're planning a holiday and you're going to be off church, I'm not saying this to bag you out and hate on you or anything like that. I'm just saying what my preference has been. You know, some people think they have to go to church. I just have to go to church, you know. Imagine if Evelyn and Josh said today, oh, we have to go to church today because mum and dad are the pastors. I don't know that any of my kids have ever said that more than two weeks in a row <coughs> after they got their smacks. And so, no. Here's the point. We don't have to go to church. We get to go to church. Hebrews 12, 22. But you've come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven. You've come to God, the judge of all, uh, to the spirits of just men made perfect. We've come to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. We, that's where we have come to. Now, I, I, I hope you could somehow record Hebrews 12, 24 to 25, maybe highlight that in your spirit this week and think about where you have been brought to as a person, where you, as, as you, with all of the stuff that makes you, you, where you've been brought to. Where, where you've been surrounded, where you've been placed, where you belong. We don't have to go to church. We get to go to church. Psalm 118, 24, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And there's something about telling your spirit what to do. Sometimes you have to tell yourself, get out of bed. Sometimes you have to tell yourself, brush your teeth. Sometimes you have to tell yourself what to do. Go to work today. You know, sometimes we have to tell ourselves, this is the day the Lord has made. I'm going to be glad and I'm going to rejoice in it. Last Sunday evening, we went to the Broadwater and we had Easter United. It was a fantastic celebration. The, the key guy, the, the, you know, Pastor Andrew is one of the key ladies who organises that stuff. And then the key guy who's sort of Angela's boss um, he uh, came over to my place on Tuesday afternoon. He was dropping some signs off. We had a bit of a chat. He said, how do you think it went? I said, Hayden, this was awesome. I said, it was the best one yet. Definitely the, be the best one yet. And um, I, I gauged that by what was going on, by how I felt, by, by the, in the, the increased number of people who were around us, and, but also significant. Signific yeah. Uh, mainly by, um, <laughs> I need a drink of water or something, <laughs> mostly. <laughs> that was a big sign to me and it went like this. <laughs> by how many people that our, ch our church brought along. 
Right? Our church brought along some other people in their family and, and stuff like that in some of their friendship circles. And I got to speak to some of these people and they enjoyed it as well. I mean, I was still hearing these stories. So I said, Hayden, it was definitely the best yet. Now, last year, I know that they had like 3,000, 3,500. I reckon there were 5,000 there this year. I mean, we got there and went and sat with Lewis and Rita and we were right where the food carts were, whereas previously we'd been, we'd been up the front. Now, I don't know whether Lewis did that specifically, but it was just full. There were a lot of people all around there. What's going on? People are loving getting to church. One of the ladies in our church brought her son and girlfriend along and when the call went out to accept Jesus, Right at the end of the night, so it's like 7.30, her hand went up. I want Jesus. It was pointed out to me, hey, someone in our group's accepting Jesus. I looked to my right. A couple of other people in our group were accepting Jesus right there on the lawn. And then I, I lifted up my eyes. I'm kind of cheating, you know, because he said everyone close their eyes and, and uh, bow their heads. But, I, but I'm having a bit of a sneak peek of what's going on. And I saw not, there were dozens and dozens and perhaps uh, across that group, even hundreds of people accepting Jesus right there on the broad water in front of everybody. It was powerful. What a glorious thing God has set in place for our city. I said to Hayden, this is one of the highlights of our, of our church calendar now, Easter United. But right there, one of the ladies in our church, her son, girlfriend, transformation by the blood of Jesus. And I thought about that. Here is a new name registered in heaven. Here's a new name that's been added to the list of those who are going to enter into the throne room of God one day and God's going to look and say, well done, my good and faithful servant. You've been washed, you've been forgiven. You're now part of my family by the blood of Jesus. And what was the context? Let me tell you, it didn't happen at McDonald's. It didn't happen down at, uh, you know, while she was going to a movie. It didn't even happen in her home. It happened in a specific context. The context was church. It happened there, transformation. I love Sundays. I've got a friend I'm going to invite to the stage now and uh, you're going to need a mic. Jack, you want, to, you want to come up? Let's welcome up Jack, everybody. I'm just going to need, he's going to need a mic. I'm giving one. Praise God. Get on you, Jack. Come on up here with me. Praise God. How are you? You're on now. You just need to push that up. And where's Josh? You're on. Okay, good. It's a special day for you, mate. Hey. And uh, Jack's had a couple of wins this week. How many have been enjoying Jack's musical talent on stage? What a, what a great guy. He's also uh, my running buddy. Yep. I did run without you yesterday, though. <laughs> would, have been, would have been good to have you on. Doing the 10K. Would have been good. I was, I was, there was other ministry, that I, there was yeah. other things I was doing. Jack, uh, how yeah. far did you run yesterday? Uh, it was 10K, just over 10K. Just over 10K. And I'm still sore from it. You're sore, right? Okay, anyway, he, we, we've been working up. I think we ran six the other day, didn't we? Or we ran we five and walked seven, one. Think, yeah. I think it was just under seven. Just under seven? I think. Way. To go, come on. I got it. My goal is to run 10Ks in a little bit of time. Anyway, along now, we've gone for about three or four runs now, and I really enjoy running with Jack because we don't just run, we actually talk while we're running. And, um, and that's because Jack slows down his pace so that I can breathe and talk at the same time. And so we're, it's a fairly kind of uh, degenerous pace to me, isn't it? It's a good pace. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think even now it's a it's a it's a fifty six year old pace as opposed to a twenty eight year old pace. Mm. You half my age. <laughs> I just realised that. I didn't say it. <laughs> uh, you didn't say it. Right. Anyway, anyway, we were running on Tuesday morning. I actually got a text from Jack. He'd been down to Dubbo in the middle of New South Wales, and he's on his way back. 
and he just wanted to see me. He just wanted to run with me. And so he goes, are we running tomorrow? I said, yeah, yeah, let's do it. So he was at my place at 6 a.m. in the morning and we started running. It was cool. We were going along, got our pace, no worries, it's cool. And then Jack says, we, we started talking about spiritual things. We always do, right? Yeah, yeah he tells me what's on his heart. And uh, so, but you said something to me very specific and uh, you, told me, you told me about something that you wanted to do, Jack. Why don't you tell the church about it? Um, planning to get baptised today. Hey. Yeah. All right. So tell us a little bit about your background uh, in, in church and stuff like that because I don't think we all know. We've seen you play, but we haven't yeah. heard much yet. So yeah. tell, us, tell us a little. So my story is I grew up in church. Mum and Dad were, always had the pastor role. So I grew up as a pastor's kid. A PK. Yeah, well, um, yeah, grew up as a pastor's kid. Sort of well, most of my faith has been based off their faith. Like like I think I've just lived mostly off of their faith in God and all that. Yeah. Um, Which we do when we're young. There was a point where I sort of moved away to Newcastle for about a year. And then I was like going to a church like, by myself, knew no one. I was just sort of trying to explore, explore it for myself. Yep. And I was able to work through some things. Like it opened a few doors being there. And started thinking about getting baptised around then because oh, there's, there's been a fair few times where like in altar calls and stuff, like I put my hand up and stuff, but I know I've always been half committed to it. Right. And so it's all, I've always come back in that sort of circle. <laughs> right. So the why I want to get baptised is just I want to make a more definite decision to follow God. Isn't that wonderful? That's so good. And just as you, as you were speaking there, you know, you've um, talk, uh, um, baptism is immersion, right? Mm. And you know, you get a tea bag. If you sort of half dip the tea bag, it's not kind of done. Yes. It's not a really pretty, satisfying pretty cup weak, of tea. Yeah. Pretty weak. Yeah. We're not there, are we? Yeah. You're going all in. No one enjoys it, yeah. The whole, in, yeah. whole and, and so I'm going to be baptising you straight after service. We're going yep. to go down to the pool. Yep. You're all invited to come and watch him be fully immersed. Now, I'm, I'm believing, Jake, that uh, this is going to be a, a, a powerful, vibrant step forward for you in yep. your heart, in your spirit, in your mind, just in lots of areas of breakthrough. Yep. I know that uh, heaven's rejoicing. Yep. Right? Well, mum and, and dad are too. Mum and dad are as well, <laughs> yeah, all right? Found, they found out this morning. <laughs> <laughs> They've been waiting a while. You kept yeah. them waiting. Anyway, uh, that's good, mate. I'm yeah. looking forward to baptising you. Me too. All right? Yeah. Thanks yeah. for coming up. Let's thank Jack. <laughs> wow, wow. Hearing him making a confession of hope and uh, wanting to be all in. Hebrews 10, 23 to 25. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promises is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. And we're going to do that today with Jack. Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another or encouraging one another and so much more as you see the day approaching. How many know the day seems to be approaching? How many know the day seems to be approaching? Things to be, seem to be getting crazier out there in, in planet Earth. And there's a few things here. It says continually through these verses, let us, let us, let us. This is not speaking about acting by yourself. This is not speaking about just being a lone ranger. It's, it's, it's not, when it says let us, let us, let us, it's not speaking about green leaves in a salad bowl. It's talking about... <laughs> You like that? <laughs> it's, it's actually talking about doing it together. One another. Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves. It's talking about doing it together. Encouraging one another. And saying, don't forsake this. Don't neglect. Some people ne have neglected church. Some people have neglected their faith. You know what they've actually done? They've neglected their own relationship with Jesus. They've neglected to uh, look after and foster what Jesus wants to do. It's not talking about being by yourself somewhere and worshipping God 
Because how can you love one another and stir up good works and encourage somebody if you're all by yourself? It doesn't make sense. What are you going to do? Have church in your own living room and go, hey, hey, you, I'm encouraging you to get up and praise the Lord, you. Oh, yeah, great, great idea. No, you know what? No one really does that. No one really does that. But in church, we can do that. We get it. And the day is approaching. I know of too many people who've disconnected or lost their way in the, these last few years. But I feel the Spirit of God is moving again. I feel the Spirit of God is moving uh, um, in our nation, in our state, certainly moving in our city. Hundreds of people gave their life to Jesus last week. And I believe you move in our church. I believe he wants to move in Pimpama. And I believe there are people out there in community, even this morning, who just know they ought to be in church, but they're not here yet. They just know where they belong, but they've got barriers and issues and things and stuff. But I'm believing the Spirit of God is drawing people to himself because he's the God who wants to wash them. He's the God who wants to lift them, encourage them, speak into their lives, set them free. That's what he wants to do. Even though there are people outside of church there are people out there seeking good community again. I really do believe that, you know, I, I think about the, the history of the last five years of, of planet Earth. You know, we went through all of the COVID and the social distancing sort of stuff. Social distancing, what's another word for that? Disintegration, social distancing. A lot of people have been on that path, right? Getting away from community and stuff like that. But I think people are over that. They've found that that is a dead end. For some of it's been a tragic, for some people it's been a tragic dead end. But I believe people are beginning to warm out of that cold, stay away, be disconnected and be okay in being disconnected sort of way of life. And people are seeking out genuine community again. Genuine community, like what we have here. Everyone say genuine community. Genuine community. That's what we have here. You know why? Because I feel it every Sunday. There's evidence of it every Sunday. Every Sunday we get together. When we have a dinner at and Readers on Tuesday, guess what? It happens again. We, we get together. There's genuine community. People are loving getting together. They're loving coming into God's presence. Hi, how are you? Welcome. People just want to be in God's house. They want to hear something that's true, something that's real. Something that's relevant for their soul. Isn't that true? They want to encourage one another. Even after service today, there'll be things to pack down and all that sort of stuff. But you know the most notable thing that will happen after the service today? We'll hang around, we'll have coffee together, there'll be lots of laughter and there'll be kids running around. And it'll be like, wow, what a sense of community. I know that when we go down and we baptise Jack in the pool just, just after this, people are going to be hanging around. Last Sunday, hundreds of people received Jesus down at the Broadwater. There are not just hundreds, but I know that there are thousands in our community who are just hanging out for God's house and for God's community. They're looking for a Christian friend to take them to church, a place where they could come to. Praise God. You know, this, this series about having a vibrant faith. Pastor Ange next week is going to be talking about being spirit-led and allowing the Spirit of God to, to speak to us and show us what needs to be done and what needs to be said and what needs to be ministered. And even, even this morning we, we prayed for a couple of people here. You know, um, Michelle came up to me just before service. She said, Pastor James. Would it be okay if we pray for some people just before the service? And I said, absolutely. She said, okay, this is how we'll do it. I said, sounds good to me. And so, so right there, I, th I didn't know that there were some needs in our church. A couple of ladies came forward and we, we prayed and laid hold of God for them. And just uh, we created a space where the Spirit, well, the Spirit created the space is the point I want to make. 
where someone could be ministered to here. And very precious to me that someone could be touched and ministered to. We've created the setting. We've invited the Spirit of God in here and God is moving. After service, we're going to go down and we're going to see Jack being baptised, fully immersed. It's going to be just a glorious thing. Praise God. Sunday's in church. I love church. I love Jesus. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. You know, I want to thank you for coming. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I'm so glad you're here. God's so glad you're here. I'm glad for this day. I'm glad for this place. I'm I'm glad you've been able to come along this morning. And I'm praying that God's grace will be more than sufficient for you today. Here's something. All those years ago, we've just come out of Easter. Jesus died on the cross to pay for the sins of mankind, my sins and yours. He loved you so much, He died for you, the Bible says. While we were still sinners, Jesus died for us, demonstrating His love for us in that way, it says in Romans. Because we're all sinners. We've all, short and fall, we've all fallen short of the glory of God. None of us are right. No, not one of us. But God is so gracious to us to give us another chance. And today, He's offering you that chance. Perhaps you've come into church today and you know that you need Jesus in your life. You haven't been living as a Christian yet. Perhaps it's the first time you've even considered Jesus in your life. Perhaps there's even been an awakening in your life and and God has been drawing you back and you've come along today and today's a day. This This is the day the Lord has made for you to come back to Him. And it's going to be a day of rejoicing and gladness. It starts with you giving your life to Jesus. If that's you in this place, our eyes are closed, our heads are bowed. If that's you in this place, would you do something? Would you lift up your hand and say, Pastor, that's me. Please pray for me. I need Jesus this morning. That's exactly where I'm at. I need Jesus. Would you slip up your hand now? And we will pray for you today. I need Jesus. Perhaps you're coming back to Jesus. Lift up your hand. We'll pray for you. Amen. Amen. You can put that down. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All right. These who raise their hands, we're going to pray with you and I want you to pray together with me. And let's uh, let's just join our hearts and uh, say these words. Say, Lord Jesus, I'm putting my trust in you to wash away my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I'm inviting you to be the Lord of my life. So come in and make me whole. Come in and set me free so that I can be a child of God and I can walk with you in hope and in trust that you've got it all covered for me. In Jesus' Name, Amen. 